Question six. Question six. Peptide molecules can be classified according to the number of amino acid units joined by peptide bonds in the molecule. Okay, we've got a di, tri, tetra, penta, and a gap, and then poly. Okay, complete the table to identify the type of peptide with the following amino acid sequence. We've got one glycine, so alanine, glycine, valine, proline, tyrosine, serine. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a, yeah, hexa peptide. It's an odd mark of a question. And obviously after six we can't be bothered to count, so we just go poly. Right, partial hydrolysis of another pentapeptide molecule gave a mixture of three smaller peptide molecules with the following amino acid sequence. Write the amino acid sequence for the original pentapeptide. Okay, so we've got leucine, glycine, valine, isoleucine, leucine, glycine, valine, serine. So let's do the connection. So the isoleucine, leucine, the leucine must then be connected here. Glycine, valine, valine, glycine, valine, serine is the other connection. Okay, so glycine, valine overlaps with here. So what we do is start with the isoleucine. which connects to leucine. Oh, leucine. That's terrible writing, sorry. Uh, glycine. Valine. And serine. So far, this really, I think, is not too bad for a question. Some amino acids needed to form poly polypeptides cannot be produced in the human body. State the term used to describe amino acids the body cannot make. These are ones that you need to take in your diet, so these are essential amino acids. Paper chromatography is often used to analyse the mixture of amino acids produced when peptides are broken down. On a chromatogram, the retention factor, the RF, for a substance can be a useful method of identifying the substance. And we've got our um, formula for the RF. Structure of the pentapeptide methionine encephalin, maybe? Uh, was investigated. A sample of the pentapeptide was completely hydrolyzed into its constituent amino acids and then it was applied to a piece of chromatography paper placed in solvent. Um, we've got our little picture of a chromatogram. Okay. Suggest why only four spots were obtained on the chromatogram. Okay. We had, it did say it was completely hydrolyzed, so we don't have a dipeptide left. So really what I'm expecting to happen there is that I've got two of the same amino acids in the sequence. Um, that's that's the most likely, I think. Uh, you also could have two with the same or very close RF value, um, and then it would be very very difficult for you to to see it. Um, yeah, that, that's that's it really. Um, it is known that this amino acid mixture contains the amino acid methionine. RF value for methionine in this solvent is 0 0.4. Draw a circle around the spot in the chromatogram that responds to methionine. Now, I was struggling to do this on the computer. I don't know how well I'll be able to show this clearly. This is where having a ruler in the exam is a good idea. Okay, because what we're looking for is something which gives me... I need to measure that distance. Okay, that's the distance of the solvent. And then I need something which is going to give me a fraction at 0.4. So I need something that is a bit under halfway. So I think that's halfway. That would be 0.5. So I think this one here will come out at 0.4. But I would I would measure this. I would measure this in the exam with a ruler. And I would measure the distance from for the solvent front. And then I would measure distance for this, distance for this, distance for this, distance for this. And I would plug it in to get my 0.4. Okay, but it's the second spot down, doing it by eye, and that's the right one on the mark scheme. Over the last decade, several families of extremely stable peptide molecules have been discovered where the peptide chain forms a ring. Simple cyclic dipeptide is shown. Draw a structural formula for one of the amino acids that would be formed on complete hydrolysis of the above cyclic dipeptide. Okay, right, so I just need to re-establish my amino acid. So here's my first amide link here, and here's my second. So if I want to re-establish the amino acid, I need to break here and break here, okay? So if I'm doing the one on this side, I will have NH2, CH2, C double bond O, bond OH. And you could neaten that up quite a lot.
okay it's glycine and on the other side I've got NH2 uh, CH3 and C double bond O bond O H okay again need to knit up but that's your break okay um, alpha amanitin is a highly toxic cyclic pe peptide found in death cap mushrooms lethal dose for humans is 100 mg per kilogram of body mass one gram of the death cap mushroom contains 250 milligrams of alpha amanitin calculate the minimum mass of death cap mushrooms that would contain the lethal dose for a 75 kilogram adult okay right so we've got a 75 kilogram adult So we are looking at 100 megs per kilogram. So 100 times 75 means I'm looking for the lethal dose at that 7,500. 7, okay. You get 250 milligrams from one gram of the mushrooms. So 7,500 milligrams from what? So 7,500 divided by 250 times it by one gives me 30 grams and that's your answer and that's the question